We are in Windows Server 2016 and I'm going to install Backup Exec version 16. We've extracted our files here after downloading from Backup Exec. Now we're going to mount the ISO file and we'll double click on Browser. Choose what language you want and click OK. And this is the version by Veritas after selling from Symantec back into Veritas. All right, so we have a lot of different things we can do here. The first one is pre-installation. We can run an environment check to see if the server is ready for backup exec. And this usually only takes a couple of minutes and gives you good information in case your server is not qualified to install it. So it's complete, and we can see that uh, there's a couple of warnings here, but they're not important. DHCP and the development kit, and everything else looks pretty good. So these are the, those warnings that mentioned earlier, and they have a little bit more detail in them. So let's go ahead and click Finish, and now we'll go to Installation. Now we're going to choose Backup Exec. The agent for Windows is for computers that you're backing up. And the disaster recovery option is to create a special disk for disaster recovery. You don't have to do that. You can still recover without it. But it's a lot faster if you use it because you can boot off that disk and it'll go right into your backup to do the restore. So very good for bare metal restorations. Let's go ahead and click on Backup Exec and start the installation. Now this does take quite a while. So if you have a slower server, then it could take up to an hour. Faster servers might be closer to 15 minutes. You also want to make sure that you have a backup drive ready to go. We've got our backup drive right here, and it doesn't have a lot of data on it. So we should be able to use it for our backing up our server. However, you might want to have a much larger backup drive or even a SAN storage area network if you want to back up many days onto one disk or one volume. Looks like the unpacking is almost done and soon we'll be on to the installation part. And now we're on to the software license agreement. Go ahead and scroll down, read through it and click I accept and click next. We're going to choose the custom installation just so you can see the different options. Typical is usually fine, but let's see what we have here. So we have the local installation rather than a remote. So you can install this onto other servers and other places if you want. And we have the option of doing the entire installation or just the console only just so we can manage backups on another management server. Go ahead and click Next. Once again, we have our computer environment checks, and it shows us basically the same information it did last time. And we can go ahead and click Next. If you have any red X's, then you'll have to stop and fix those before you can continue. So we're going to use the 60-day trial. We don't have a key. We'll go ahead and click Next. It says the trial copy has enabled many options, must be purchased. We'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so we have a lot of different options here. We have the documentation, which is checked by default, copy server configurations. That just allows you to copy files between backup exec servers. And we have the backup exec server itself for the central admin server option. We don't have a central admin server where we're managing multiple different backup exec servers, so we're just going to go ahead and skip that. Then we have the virtual tape library support. And we don't have tape drives or a tape drive device, but we'll just go ahead and leave it checked for now because it is one of the defaults. If we have an application or database server, we want to check that. So let's go ahead and check that as well. And if you have VMware or Hyper-V, we'll check that. And if you have a Linux server, you can check that. We do not, so we're not going to worry about that. The duplication option allows you to strip out copies of files. It'll just back up one file rather than all of the files with the exact same name and size type of file 
which tends to use up a lot of space. Now you do have to have a lot of extra RAM to make that work, and we do. We have 76 gigs of RAM, so it shouldn't be a problem. I would recommend to not do that with any less than 16 gigs, but you'd probably be better off with at least 32. We don't have the central admin server option, as mentioned earlier, and we don't need the advanced disk backup option. But we're going to go ahead and check it anyway, even though we don't need it, because it has a lot of nice stuff. The synthetic backup takes data from previous full or incremental backups and puts them all together. Whereas the true image restore enables backups to restore contents of directories to the point they were at the time of the full or incremental backup. So lots of great stuff uh, for choosing the advanced disk backup option. And then there's the NDMP option. It uses the network data management protocol and it initializes and controls backups and restores network attached storage. So if you have a NAS on your uh, network that you would like to also back up and, and be able to restore exactly the way it was, such as permissions, then that is a way to go. We'll go ahead and click Next. We're going to choose our default language of English and choose Next. Now we're choosing our drives where we want to install backup exec. Let's go ahead and choose the C drive and we'll choose the default path that is set here, although you can certainly change it if you like, and click Next. Now we'll want to put in our password, which is going to be the password for the administrator on the domain. In our case, if you don't have a domain, you can use the local administrator password of the server itself, and click Next. And we see that the account has been granted the logon, so I'll go ahead and click OK. Now it's going to want to put a local copy of SQL Express on the server. If you have an existing copy of SQL Server, you can choose that now. And we do happen to have a copy of SQL Server on there, so we'll just go ahead and choose that. Choose the server and click Next. And now we'll click Install. Now, if for some reason you don't have SQL Server and you choose the Express version, it just takes a little bit longer to install the Express version because it takes about, uh, oh, 10 minutes or so just for the SQL Express part. And then it will move on for the backup exec and continue on. But since I already had SQL, it saved us a little bit of time. And now we're continuing on to the installation portion. It's putting in the Semantic Live Update feature. And then it's going to put in the uh, other prerequisites in order to continue on with the installation. It even gives you an estimated installation time for each of the different products as it goes through up until the actual backup exec product itself, which is the last one. We're now on the backup exec product itself, which is the last stage, and then we should be able to launch backup exec 16 shortly. The installation was successful, which is great. We see that the wizard has completed. It wants us now to go to the database maintenance and security pane to export the database encryption key. And the encryption key allows us to put a password encryption on our backups for additional security. We also have the option to run live update, view the readme file. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. And we can leave or remove the desktop icon. I'm going to go ahead and leave that on there and we'll click finish. And I'm going to skip the survey. And now live update pops up. And we'll run the installation. The download of the file is complete, and now it's actually running the install of the update. Our hotfix has been applied. We'll go ahead and click Finish and Close. And now we can open up Backup Exec 16 for the first time. Starts out with a what's new in this version of Backup Exec. Support for Windows Server 2016, as we see here, of course, and uh, vSphere 2016 as well, as well as Azure. So this is the home page, and it gives you an idea of what's been configured and what needs to be configured, how long our trial is going to last, as well as any active alerts. We also have the Backup and Restore area which looks familiar from the previous version 15. Job monitor, we have no jobs yet, but we'll make some of those jobs in upcoming videos. And of course, we'll add storage as well. And 
there's our different reports, which at this point are blank. So please watch some of the upcoming videos that I'll create that show you how to use Backup Exec 16.